We're driving a 2022 Lexus LX 600 F Sport Handling. Coming up, we're gonna tell you how this big SUV is in one way, very small. But first, information explosion. If you're wondering why are they wearing different clothes in the B-roll than in uh, the car, I can tell you why. We had to do the entire video over again because a GoPro failed. Thanks, GoPro. No, we're not going to get a sponsorship from GoPro, but we are going to get a the video out of this. We've got practice under our belts. The LX600 is the flagship SUV for Lexus. That means it's kind of the pinnacle of what they can create, and it sets the tone for the brand. Let's begin with interior. When I saw the price point, I expected it to feel fancier in here. So what I'll tell you is that we're driving the F Sport version. Uh, it's hard to say, but it's easy to talk about <laughs> because this is the sportier rendition. So in the base version, you have open pore wood trim, which I think is a much more luxurious um, version of this. The one we've got here, as you may know from the red, is uh, and this uh, metallic trim here, is that it's uh, going for a little bit more of a sportier vibe. So it may not read quite as luxurious, but that is by design but yeah it doesn't immediately scream money the features included which we'll get into in the remarks section really scream money you have some button thoughts there are so many buttons and i feel like they are not intuitively laid out i'm <laughs> Kiddo is referring to a button right over here that we haven't been able to figure out the function of. It's on this little supplemental screen down here, and when you push it, that's what happens. So when I saw this button, the only thing I could think of was that it makes you vomit on your shoes, and Kiddo loves this joke. <laughs> hey guys, I spent like 10 minutes looking through the handy owner's manual, and I figured out what the button does. It's called Easy Access, and basically you press it, and it lowers the vehicle to make it easier to get in. Also, I threw it out to Instagram and you guys had some highly amusing suggestions for what the button might do. Thanks. But yeah, you were talking about buttons though. Um, you know, one good example is that the uh, button you press to activate the camera system is over here, the exact opposite side of the steering wheel to where the actual camera is. The locking differential button is over here. And the uh, rest of it is over here. So there's a little bit of a disconnect. You do need to do a little bit of uh, research when you buy your Lexus LX because there are a few initialisms in here, like MTS. Do you know what that stands for? You might not. Uh, it's multi-terrain select, and these are the things that you'll kind of figure out over time. That said, if you're spending uh, you know upwards of 100 grand on your SUV, it's worth putting a little bit of uh, research in to understand it. True. One highlight for me in the Lexus LX are the front seats. Lexus and Toyota do such a good job removing pressure points from the seats, and true enough, I'm not feeling any pressure here. When you started driving, I was hoping for more um, lateral support as you go speed around corners. Sounds like your real problem is that you need a husband that's less fun. <laughs> We should talk about space too. In the second row, um, plenty of space. You got a recline function, but not a slide function. Accessing the third row can be a challenge um, because of the aperture. And then once you're there, knee room is fine, but the seat to butt ratio is unfavorable. And with that high knee position, that can get uncomfortable for adults over the long haul. My real challenge as a five foot 10 inch guy uh, is head space. So you'll wanna save those for adorable children like that one. In the beginning, I teased that there is an aspect of this big SUV that's quite small. That is cargo space behind the third row. It's 11 cubic feet. You can fit four bags in a pumpkin, so I wish that there was a net back there to hold items in, or it still had the split tailgate that they used to have, because I feel like that would make that space way more functional. Keeping stuff from rolling out is, is definitely important, and the space available there is pretty small. Um, I think realistically, most people are gonna use this as a five-seater with occasional third row use. Oh, and if you're gonna motor down those third row seats, it takes a little while. Settle in. I'm very impatient about that. We're impatient people. Yeah, let's yeah. get to the fun stuff. Come on. <laughs> hey, child, how is it getting in and out of this SUV? It's easy. The step's really low. 
And one thing that helps is something called AHC. Again, consult your owner's manual. It's automatic height control. And so the, all Lexus LXs have uh, air suspension that can raise and lower the vehicle. And in that lowered position, which is specifically for easy ingress, ingress is easy. <laughs> As is egress. The words have stopped making sense to me as I'm saying them. I think you nailed it, sweetie. What about getting the car seat in and out? There's a huge lap flap covering both um, Latch flap! Latch points. Once you get that out of the way, the latch points are very accessible. I found the door opening and height to be very favorable for installing a car seat. Regarding safety, neither the NHTSA or IIHS have tested the Lexus LX, but what I can tell you is that it has 10 airbags standard and a rich suite of active driver assists, including lane keeping assist, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, plus a very cool camera system that we're gonna get to in a second. Overall, what do we think, family? Is the Lexus LX family friendly? Yeah. Family friendly. Uh-huh. Yeah. Rear window test. Yay, I'll do it Yay. Armrest test. I'm driving in a comfortable eight and four, and I like the positioning of the perches. They're very flat, and uh, there's the right amount of cushion here. It's not uh, too squishy, not too firm. I'm gonna go 85% inboard and 85% outboard. Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family? If so, feel free to subscribe. Style! Let me quickly thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. I wear them in the helicopter because they're very lightweight, they're bendable, and uh, they also have these very thin temples that work really well under a headset. But you can also wear them in your daily life. I wear the ophthalmic line of Flying Eyes, and all the properties that you enjoy about the aviation frames are here, which means that they're so comfortable. I forget I'm wearing them sometimes. What's also cool about them is that they come with these removable magnetic tinted lenses. So I can wear them when I'm staring at my cat or I can go outside and stare at her from out there. Whether you're staring at your cat from the comfort of your own home or from a helicopter in the distance, Flying Eyes has you covered. Click the link in the description below and use the promo code and you can save 10% on Flying Eyes. Do you like the looks of the Lexus LX? I do. It's a pretty large vehicle, but they've done a lot to not make it feel overly bulky. Like they've chiseled out. Divot, scoop. Scallop. <laughs> Whatever that thing is on the hood. It looks like Let's it's made it. to accommodate a novelty sized hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> There's a similar hot dog scoop on the side. I always love how disconnected our descriptions are probably from the designers that actually worked on the vehicle. I bet they didn't use the phrase hot dog scoop. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> One controversial element in the design is the grill, uh, in that it is absolutely massive. The standard uh, grill has these big horizontal bars. The F Sport does away with that and does sort of a uh, black crosshatch, which sort of de emphasizes the grill. So it's odd, but like the sportier version of the LX is in some ways the more subtle and tasteful rendition. I also note that um, the F Sport has 22 inch wheels, which um, with less sidewall, that can be an inhibitor for off roading, though that it hasn't really stopped us from taking this thing off road. What do you guys think of the style of the Lexus LX? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Tell us in the comments. Are you curious what we're doing between YouTube videos? If so, you can always follow us on Instagram in motion. I previously reviewed a Lexus LX 600 Ultra Luxury for Kelly Blue Book, and in that review, I noted there was so much movement from the body, I drove that vehicle in Sport Plus mode everywhere I went because it firmed up the adaptive suspension. The F Sport version that we're driving has a firmer suspension. It also has a rear stabilizer bar and a Torsen limited slip rear differential for getting power to the ground, which works both on and off road. Um, and I do find this to be a more pleasant driving vehicle vehicle because you get less of that body movement. I wouldn't say this is a sporty SUV, but uh, it certainly feels sportier than a standard LX600. As for powertrain, I really like how the 10-speed automatic transmission works. You can hear the rev changes, but you can't really feel a change in acceleration. It's very, very smooth with how it applies power. My only complaint is that sometimes when I start to uh, lean into the accelerator and request a little bit more pull uh, from the engine, there can be a little bit of a pause before the engine really uh, comes alive. There we go. 
But once the turbocharged V6 is on boil, oh, it boils. They say the zero to 60 time is about 6.9 seconds. And for a vehicle of this mass, that ain't half bad. In fact, it's half good. That sounds bad. It's good, it's good. <laughs> All right, I'm done talking. Let's see what Sweetie thinks. Sweetie's driving. How do you feel when you have some trepidation about large vehicles? We've driven a lot of trucks recently, and this is so much more refined as compared mm. to that that it feels less intimidating. Okay, you also don't have a big old bed on the back, so that probably helps a little bit. True. What about steering effort? Does it feel manageable? Yeah, the steering effort is not something I've even noted. Any visibility issues? Over my right shoulder, the that's my left shoulder. Now a good editor would remove that, but a fun yes. editor would leave it in. We'll see which one I have. <laughs> Over my left shoulder, there's this pillar and handle, which is handy for the rear passenger when they're getting in, but terrible for me seeing behind me. Although blind spot warning does come standard, so that's kind of a helpful thing. Uh, generally speaking though, do you like driving this thing? I like driving this way more than I thought I would. Okay, that sounds like a pretty satisfied sweetie. Yep. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. So overall, pretty positive sentiments from my lady here. I need to add that the soft suspension for the LX actually works really well off-road. Um, when you're going over bumps and divots and, and that kind of stuff, uh, it makes for a fairly comfortable ride for uh, both me and my passengers, and I love them. Also, you got that locking center differential, and it does a great job of apportioning power. So when you have a big articulation moment where maybe two wheels are light, the LX does a really good job of sending power to the tires that have good grip, especially in this version with the Torsen Limited Slip Rear Differential. So even though this is the sporty one, it can still get down off-road. I don't know why I said I, it like that. I know, like yeah. getting down is usually easier. You want it to get up. Yeah, if anything, you want to get up. Well, but you sometimes you get, get up, up to, to get, get down. down. Whew, we've been married too long, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Before we move on, let me just quickly thank everybody who supports us in whatever way you want to support us, whether that's a like or leaving a comment or uh, supporting us on Patreon, or there's now a new function. There's a thanks button. If you, for some reason, want to support us financially directly, YouTube now makes that possible so we can uh, sustain our gaggle of quickly failing GoPros. But however you support us, thank you. Thank you. Emotion factor. I think the emotion factor comes from the features that are here that aren't on other vehicles. The climate concierge, the cool box, and probably some other things that we haven't talked about yet. That's a tease. <laughs> You're absolutely right though. There's um, uh, stylistic statements. There's a brand that people feel great about buying. There's the off-road capability and the potential for adventure if you're the bold person who wants to take this much money off-roading. Yeah, I think there is an emotion factor here, but what do you think? If you're feeling compelled to buy a Lexus LX of your very own, I bet you're gonna have to sell your current car first. If you wanna know what your current car is worth or what you should pay for your upcoming Lexus LX, click the Kelly Blue Book link in the description below and you can find out all of your pricing information. It'll be a magical journey through numbers. <laughs> and now we head onward to remarks. Remark number one, infotainment. So we've got two screens here. There's a smaller seven inch information display down here. And then there's the main one you'll actually interface with, which is a 12.3 inch screen horizontally oriented up here. I found myself being a little frustrated with this screen because some buttons like turning the fan on higher actually do stuff. But some buttons, like when you go into the climate focus stuff, seat heater and cooler don't actually do anything when you push them. They're just like to show you what's already happening. Yeah, you got the little display here that shows like how hard I'm pushing the accelerator and like when I'm turning the wheels, it matches that on the display and it shows you if you've gone up or down with the air suspension. I bet that could be integrated into an off-road display on the main screen. So this does feel a little superfluous, but more screens, um, people like more screens. Cool. Up top here, we have an infotainment uh, interface that is very reminiscent of the Toyota Tundra we drove recently. And if you're curious what we thought about the Tundra, click up here. How do you find this interface? Graphics are really crisp and easy to see. The icons, though, are very small, <laughs> and there aren't a lot of physical buttons. Like, there's just a knob. Overall, I think that's a pretty easy um, interface to use. Yes. And really, my favorite part of that interface is the 360-degree camera system. You get your sides and that kind of thing. But also, the uh, vehicle caches the imagery, and then it shows you what's happening, almost like you're looking through the vehicle. Something 
sometimes when you've gone over something, you miss it with your tires, but when you back up, you hit it. And this shows you what you just went over to avoid rocks or divots in the pavement. And it just looks cool. It does look cool. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot. The big thing to mention is that we have an actual touch screen now instead of the former remote touch interface that drove car reviewers and I imagine car shoppers crazy over time. So now we have an interface that's uh, similar to how everybody interfaces with technology, which is a touch screen. Another cool feature is the cool box. Yeah, coupon. <laughs> it can be accessed from my side, your side, and kiddo's side, which is really cool. And what it is, is this deep glove compartment. It will keep things cool. So you can have drinks or yogurt parfaits at school pickup. It will not freeze things, but it does keep things cool. And I think if that was in our vehicle, we'd use it all the time. Another feature I really enjoyed using was the Climate Concierge. It's a series of sensors and systems that all work together to keep you the appropriate temperature. It does that through the climate control, seat heater, cooler, and the steering heater. I love that, especially here in the mountains because it's so chilly in the morning and then it gets really hot and I don't ever have to touch any buttons. It just keeps me nice and cool. What I'm hearing is that I'm not taking good enough care of you <laughs> and you're going to the Lexus LX to meet your um, personal <laughs> comfort needs. I have failed you. Clearly, you need to be hitting my seat more often. Oh my. <laughs> oh, the iguana. <laughs> About time. We missed you, guy. On a completely different note, if you'd like to tow with your Lexus LX, it can tow up to 8,000 pounds. Sweetie. Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Why not? Our trim recommendation is which trim will give you the features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. I'm going to recommend getting the base trim because it is really well equipped. It's got leather seats that are heated up front, open pour wood trim, that sweet 360 degree camera system, multi-terrain select so you can choose exactly what kind of uh, drive mode you want for the terrain you're driving over off-road, plus that electronic locking center differential for gnarly off-road traction. By all measures, it is a lovely and capable SUV, but it is only only a five passenger SUV. So if you need seating for seven, you'll have to move up to the LX600 premium trim, which costs $12,000 extra. As for the competitors that we've got, fancy SUVs like the Range Rover, which is all new for 2023, the Mercedes-Benz GLS, the Jeep Grand Wagoneer, which at some point we'd like to drive, or if you used to shop the Toyota Land Cruiser, this is your only choice. It's basically a Land Cruiser with a Lexus badge and Lexus styling because the Land Cruiser is no longer sold in America. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. Synopsis! In thinking about the essence of the Lexus LX, it's big, it's floaty, and it's kind of complicated. To me, it is every airship in a Studio Ghibli film ever. By the way, am I saying that right? Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? I have heard people say it both ways. And also, is it Totoro or Totoro? It's both. If you listen to the song, it's, um, then you'll be with Totoro, Totoro. They say the name two different ways in the same theme song. Madness. Hey, if you'd like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter video, and I promise we got helicopter videos coming up, feel free to subscribe. If you'd like to see what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can always follow us on Instagram. And if you want to support us in any way possible, whether it be a like, a subscribe, a comment, or that thanks button that's uh, been cleverly installed down below this video, feel free to do so. We appreciate your support, whatever form that takes. Family, I think we've done a great job reviewing this thing twice. Twice! May I have another high five? <laughs> And an additional high five from you. <laughs> and you come get your belabored high five. Ugh.